In the world of butterflies, the monarch is king. With its exquisite orange and black patterns, many consider the monarch to be the planet's most beautiful winged insect. To survive, it needs milkweed, the caterpillar's only food. But modern herbicides nearly wiped out milkweed, and with it, the beloved monarch. When the Prairie Wetlands Learning Center in Fergus Fall opened in 1998, it immediately took up the monarch's cause in partnership with the University of Kansas. Their numbers used to be way up and there was millions and millions and millions of them and then scientists started noticing that their numbers were declining and so they wanted to, to see how they traveled through the United States so that's why they started the tagging program and then they started counting them down in Mexico and figuring out their populations were dwindling. They went down so bad that it started a nationwide, oh, we've got to do something about it. And we've, we've known that the trend has been going down, but I've had my thumb on the pulse of the monarchs because I've been doing this for so long. Teresa Jaskowicz leads youth and adult volunteers in capturing, tagging, and releasing monarch butterflies to help track their migration. Children come to the center eager to net the majestic insects. But first, Teresa and volunteer Joe Fritz teach the kids about the four stages of a monarch's life. The, the monarch is a true metamorphosis animal, and that means it has four stages. It has the first stage is laying of the egg. And from the egg, the caterpillar hatches out and it eats its food, which is the milkweed. And then it goes into its chrysalis. The chrysalis then changes. It gets all soupy inside. And then it you can see it starting to change and turn black. And then it splits out of its chrysalis from its pupa and it's a full butterfly. The students are also taught how to properly net a butterfly. Now there's a butterfly, boys and girls, and he's flying around in the air, just looking really cool. And here you come with your net. When they're flying in the air, should you swing wildly at them and try and get them? No, because we can break their wing that way. We don't want to hurt them, do we? So this is what we do. Put your hand back on this. Is we take the net, we see the butterfly. We sleep up on the butterfly. We put it over and make sure it goes up. And then your partner is going to grab your net because we're going to work in twos today. And then the butterfly flies up and then you've caught it. And then I and Miss Joe will put a tag on it for you. In the net, when you have the butterfly, of course it's scared. So you have to get the butterfly between your two fingers, all four wings, they have four wings. Now there is a cell that looks like a mitten. It's called the discal cell. And that's where you place the tag and make sure it sticks. But, and then you can, you're still holding it so it's not bending its wings around the side. It's mind boggling to believe that these tiny little critters don't know where they're going, but they get there anyway down to Mexico and they live that long. And then they go to Texas and lay their eggs. And it's a generational thing. And then two, three generations later, they come back. They have never been to where they're going and they'll never come back to where they've been. Over the 19 years, we're almost at 5,000 that we've caught and tagged. And just recently, last year, we had four of our tags found in two places in Mexico. We've had tags found in four places in Mexico and one place in Litterdale, Iowa, which is about just directly south of us. And we've had 57 recovered which I think is great because you don't really want them recovered. That helps with the, the scientific um, study, but that means that they died down in Mexico and didn't make it to lay another generation. The, the children that come here, they're so excited about them, but they, they go back home and they tell their parents about it. After the monarch tagging is over, each child leaves the center with a native plant to start their own pollinator-friendly gardens. A lot of people get a little scared when we say to put natives in. They, they, they think they're gonna take over. They're a weed, they're a weed. Try it, you'll like it. You can embrace nature. It, it's not the creepy crawlies. Um, it, it's fun to watch and to learn and just help the monarchs however you can. And if you can't, you can be aware of them. The average person, if you have a yard, is to put in three plants. Put in two milkweed, 
and one blazing star. And you have a, a plant that provides nectar and you have a plant that provides the, the caterpillar with food and you never know what's gonna happen. The bees are especially good at pollinating, that's their job, but the butterflies are also pollinators. So they, did, they go from flower to flower and when they go, they take inadvertently pollen and things with them and then that creates another generation of flowers that's going to feed their next to their kin that comes back up from Mexico. The monarch's popularity draws hundreds of people to the Prairie Wetlands Learning Center every year to help with tagging. It's the insect we've all grown up with and want to protect. It's flashy. It's there. It's in your garden. They're around. The monarch is everywhere. It's in cities. It's in the country. It's in wild areas. So it's one that we all know. Oh, this is, this is made for TV, this spot.